This is your EVAP canister, also known as a charcoal canister, vapor canister, and Bruce canister. That's Bruce Banner. The best way to think about your EVAP system is the fuel tank's ventilation system. As you add fuel, that fuel takes up space. So the air that's inside the tank needs to be released or somehow allowed to vent. Likewise, as fuel is being used by the engine, the fuel level drops. So now air needs to be drawn back into the tank to equalize the pressure. Same with temperature changes. As the fuel tank heats up, the air inside expands. So that expanded air needs to be released to equalize the pressure inside the tank. Or as that tank cools off, it contracts. So now air needs to be drawn in. So it's the fuel tank's ventilation system. So why is it called EVAP? Evaporative emissions. That's because the air that needs to come out of the tank to equalize pressure has hydrocarbons within it. Nasty little fuel vapors that mess with our atmosphere. We need to somehow control that vapor so it's not just spewed out into the air we breathe. Ergo, the charcoal canister, AKA fuel vapor filter. Let me toss up a schematic on the screen and we'll talk about how this whole system operates together. This simple schematic is brought to you by Shiver. Let's start by identifying each component. First, the fuel tank. That's the easiest to identify. Attached to the fuel tank are the vapor lines, and that leads directly into our charcoal canister. Now in this schematic, on our charcoal canister is the vent solenoid. An important fact about the vent solenoid is that it is normally open, allowing a free flow of air coming in or out depending on the needs of the fuel tank. The engine computer will only close it during a self-diagnostic test. Also attached to the charcoal canister is the fuel tank pressure sensor. And further down the line is the purge solenoid. Now the purge solenoid is normally closed. The engine computer controls when and how much this solenoid is open during a purge event. When the fuel tank pressurizes, either by heat expansion or during a fueling event, the fuel vapor is pushed through the vapor lines into the charcoal canister. The hydrocarbons bind and collect to the charcoal inside the canister. This separates the hydrocarbons from the air. That air is allowed to vent out the vent solenoid into the atmosphere. When the purge solenoid is opened by the engine computer, hydrocarbons are now sucked into the intake manifold and that gets burned into the engine. Because the vent valve is normally open, fresh air is being drawn into the charcoal canister and that purges the charcoal canister of all the hydrocarbons that have been collected. Therefore cleaning this whole thing and the process starts over. Let's swap over. This is a schematic from a Honda workshop manual. The layout is a little different, but the principles are exactly the same. Fuel vapors inside the tank get drawn into the fuel vapor lines into the charcoal canister. This fills the whole charcoal canister full of hydrocarbons. Those hydrocarbons stick to the charcoal and now just fresh air is able to escape into the atmosphere. Nice fresh air. Right here is the purge valve. When the purge is open, those hydrocarbons are drawn into the intake manifold, into the engine, to be burned up. That intake vacuum also draws fresh air from the vent back into the charcoal canister, cleaning out our whole canister so we can start over. So I got one more schematic. This schematic is from a Dodge workshop manual. Again, we have the fuel tank, lots of fuel, lots of vapor that gets drawn into our vapor lines into charcoal canister. A lot of vapor being collected. By the time that vapor reaches the end, it's allowed to go out our vent into the atmosphere as fresh air. When the purge is opened, all those hydrocarbons go out to be burned into our intake manifold. Fresh air is drawn back into the vent, cleaning out our filter. Now that we know how it operates on a schematic, let's take a field trip and see what it looks like in real life. We're in a good old junkyard. Our first specimen is a 2005 Ford Escape. Let's hop under, take a peek. Underneath the vehicle, this is where our fuel tank would be. And right here is our charcoal canister. Attached to the canister is our vent valve. See this tube here? 
If you follow it along, it goes up, up, up right here. That's where the fuel vapors would enter. It would come pressurized into here, into our charcoal canister. The vent valve is normally open, so this exit here would exit, probably routed somewhere into the atmosphere. On the other side, coming out here, this line is a vapor line that goes to our intake manifold. Let's hop under the hood. On this particular vehicle, the purge valve is right here. A lot of times you could tell by this green service cap. So there's a line that goes into it. When the valve is open, the other line goes into our intake manifold. That routes the vapors to be burned into the engine. Now let's dive under this Chevy Cobalt. So right here is our charcoal canister. This line here is coming from the fuel tank. So this is the fuel vapor in. We have our vent solenoid here, and that's connected to a pipe that just vents to atmosphere. This connector here is our fuel tank pressure sensor. And then this line goes up towards our intake manifold. On the engine right here is our purge. We have the line coming in from the fuel tank. The purge opens and gets sucked in to our intake manifold. From the natural vacuum that the engine creates, it sucks in our fuel vapor when our purge is open. Let's look at one more vehicle. All right, our last vehicle. I wanted to show you a Dodge because they're a little bit different same principle, but instead of a vent solenoid, they have what's called an ESIM, EVAP System Integrity Monitor. We'll talk about that more in depth in another video. So let's hop under, take a look. So this is our charcoal canister. This is the tube where the fuel vapors come in from the tank. This is our ESIM. It still vents, it still has a free flowing vent, but instead of a vent solenoid where it's just on off, open closed, the ESIM works on a little different principle. But the idea is the same, that it's an open, free-flowing vent until the engine computer goes through a self-system diagnostics. Under the hood, in the back, right here, is our purge solenoid. If you notice, on all our purge solenoids, they're just a two-wire, positive-negative, open-closed. And then the line that comes off of that, one of these, goes into our intake manifold to be burned by the engine. So the purpose of coming to the junkyard is to show you how different manufacturers all utilize the same principle, the same EVAP system with a charcoal canister, a purge, a vent of some sort. Their locations may be a little different, their shape may be a little different, but the principles are all the same between all these vehicle manufacturers, whether it's American vehicle, European or Asian, they all utilize the same principles in their systems. So let's head back to the shop lab classroom and wrap this video up. And that is your EVAP system in a nutshell. But how does your EVAP system fail? And when it does, what are the symptoms? And how does your engine computer know it even failed in the first place? That will be discussed in our next video. We'll talk about common failures, common symptoms, and how we can test the system to pinpoint the exact problem. I'm Robert, your host, and this is Facts also known as a charcoal canister, vapor canister, and Bruce canister.